kindly consider sharing, liking, and commenting on our videos. Your engagement plays a significant role in influencing YouTube's recommendation algorithm and reach to the global audience. We kindly request that you refrain from downloading and uploading our videos to other platforms as it affect our viewership and subscriptions. Instead, we would appreciate it if you could share the provided links directly. Thank you for your cooperation. In recent times, we've witnessed a noteworthy global phenomenon, a growing trend where religious beliefs, encompassing ideologies such as prosperity gospel, New Age spirituality, positive thinking cult, and evangelical Pentecostalism become intricately woven into the fabric of political leadership. This phenomenon is exemplified by leaders like Trump, Duterte, Bolsonaro, and Abiy Ahmed Khan. countries like the United States, Brazil, and the Philippines have somewhat firmly established systems of checks and balances, which play a vital role in preserving political stability and ensuring accountability. In these nations, the leadership tenure of those individuals was curtailed, and the robust institutional frameworks effectively countered any attempts to undermine the democratic order. Conversely, in Ethiopia, Abiy Ahmed's leadership stands out starkly. He wields absolute power, implementing an unprecedented level of control without any independent institutions or checks and balances and without oversight and accountability. Ethiopia is currently in the midst of an unprecedented and tumultuous period in its history. Over the centuries, this nation has grappled with various forms of leadership enduring dictatorial regimes and ideological shifts. But in recent times, a stark contrast emerged. Meet Abiy Ahmed. My name is Abiy Ahmed. A leader widely criticized as ineffective, incompetent, con artist, habitual liar, delusional and untrustworthy, earning a dubious place in Ethiopia's annals. These criticisms are not baseless. They find root in the events that have unfolded over the past five years of his leadership. In small town in Oromia, a destiny was whispered into the ears of a young Abi Ahmed, a prophecy from his mother, one that would shape the very fate of a nation. He clung to this divine purpose, a calling he believed in with unwavering conviction willing to do whatever it took to fulfill it. When I was just seven years old and my mother imparted a prophecy, I would one day ascend to the throne as the seventh king of Ethiopia. This declaration etched itself deeply into my consciousness. In every facet of my life, I assumed the role of a king. Even during my elementary school years, my fellow students acknowledged my regal presence. My every action, every pursuit, I approached with the unwavering belief that I would one day be the king. There are individuals here who have known me for two decades, and you can ask them. I usually don't like to take photos, but when I do, I tell them, safeguard this image, for it shall serve as evidence when I ascend to the throne as king. I once made a comment to Miles saying, there's just one person between us. Initially, people took it as a joke, but as I've risen through the ranks and continued on my journey, they have begun to take my aspirations seriously. This video depicts around 2011. Abi's own pastor prophesied that he would rise to become the Prime Minister. 
Undoubtedly, he must have shared with her his mother's prophecy that foretold his destiny as seventh king of Ethiopia. Anyone who had the opportunity to work alongside with me, even for a mere 10 days, knew I would become a prime minister. 20 years ago, during my time in the military, I foretold to a few of them that they would become my bodyguards. They currently work for me as my bodyguard. Uh, Dr. Abi is a follower of what is called the prosperity gospel. Now, this is very powerful in the United States. A lot of this theology was actually imported from the United States. Abi Ahmed, originally born into a Muslim family, later embraced the prosperity gospel. Zanash Tayachu, Abi Ahmed's spouse, is a prosperity gospel singer. They first met while serving in the military. Central to the prosperity gospel is the belief that material wealth is a sign of God's favor. Prosperity preachers will promote the idea that God intends for all his followers to thrive materially. And for believers in this doctrine, financial success and blessings are a direct indicator of one's faithfulness and alignment with God's will. Faith is a self-generated spiritual force that leads to prosperity. The prosperity gospel places enormous emphasis on a personal faith as the driving force behind material success. According to this view, unwavering faith and positive confession can manifest desires into reality. Positive speech yields positive results. Words have power. This pillar of the prosperity gospel is rooted in a belief that spoken affirmations and declarations can alter one's reality. Giving leads to financial compensation. Generosity, according to the prosperity gospel, isn't merely a virtue, but an investment strategy. Financial giving, especially to the ministries, guarantees material blessings in return. The more one gives, the more one supposedly receives. This distorted gospel is one of the largest and most tragic exports that America takes to the two-thirds world, especially Africa. Want a $65 million plane? Creflo Dollar says you just need to believe God for it. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. Oh, and remember, you need to give money, not prayer, time, or anything else. When you give to Joel Osteen, you're lending to God, and God will repay you with health and finance. The prosperity gospel is undeniably a deplorable scam and widespread fraud that has plagued many countries. Thankfully, some African nations are starting to recognize this stark reality and are taking steps to close down these churches that exploit the poor, desperate and vulnerable members of their communities. The prosperity gospel is spreading across Africa with its materialistic focus promoting greed over giving, undermining Christian values, and hindering personal and societal development. It has contributed to a leadership crisis and financial exploitation, ultimately working against the well-being of the people it claims to serve. Prosperity gospel preachers exploiting vulnerable individuals, diverting resources away from essential needs, this belief system promotes materialism, blames the poor for their circumstances, neglects social issues, fosters false hope, deepens inequality within churches, lacks accountability, reduces critical thinking, and discourages seeking non-material solutions to problems. These factors collectively contribute to the exacerbation of poverty in Africa This belief system centers around greed rather than the Christian value of giving. Instead of encouraging generosity, it focuses on accumulating wealth, masquerading as a Christian faith. In this system, believers are constantly urged to invest money in the form of financial offerings in the hopes of reaping even greater rewards. This approach contradicts the teachings of Jesus, who calls for self-denial and following him. Instead, prosperity preachers 
encourage followers to prioritize materialistic desires over their faith. The prosperity gospel preachers, in their audacity, proclaim that God demands they amass wealth in the form of gold watches, extravagant cars, and private planes. What's truly infuriating is the cunning and hypnotic techniques they employ to siphon money from unsuspecting individuals, often resorting to deceitful tactics. This heartless exploitation is particularly reprehensible as it preys on the despair of the impoverished, worsening their financial struggles. Introduced the concept of seed faith, which suggested that donations given in faith, the seeds, would multiply and return to the giver in forms of personal blessings and prosperity. This teaching laid the groundwork for the give to get doctrine. And Abi is a strong supporter of this ideology, and he actually named his political party the Prosperity Party. In 2019, Abi made a momentous decision to transform the EPRDF party into the Prosperity Party, marking a significant development as the first theocratic political party in Ethiopia. This move was indeed bold. Abi Ahmed's senior advisor made a startling admission that their approach doesn't acknowledge or address poverty. It's disconcerting to imagine a nation being governed by a political establishment seemingly apathetic towards the issue of poverty, especially when there are no apparent clear policies or strategies in place to tackle this pressing problem. Shabati is the senior political diplomacy and foreign policy advisor in uh, the office of Prime Minister Abiy. We have been talking about poverty for many, many years. When you talk about something again, 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 it becomes your friend. That's why we are trying to avoid the word poverty now. We, now, that's why we adopted the word prosperity. We're dreaming big. According to this so-called prosperity gospel, if you're poor, it apparently means you lack faith and whatever misery befalls you, well, you brought it upon yourself. The audacity of these churches and preachers to not give a damn about your suffering is infuriating. It's downright despicable how they preach that poverty and suffering are somehow deserved. We've all witnessed this despicable idea in action over the last five years with Abby in Ethiopia. It's sickening how little he cares about the poor, the destitute, the suffering, the genocide, and the displacement of innocent people. He arrogantly believes he's some kind of divine chosen one, so he doesn't give a damn about needing the people's vote. That's why he spews out the most outrageous and heartless statements without a care in the world. With Abby's rise to power in 2018, it's alarming to note that the prosperity gospel has become the official policy or ideology of the government. It's truly infuriating to see that in Ethiopia, a nation with a rich Christian and Muslim heritage spanning thousands of years, this disgraceful scam gospel has managed to infiltrate and be embraced as an official government policy. In too many African nations, prosperity gospel preachers have shamelessly driven countless people into poverty and despair. If individual pastors could wreak havoc to such an extent, one can only fathom the depths of destruction when this abhorrent ideology becomes official government policy. Abi's Prosperity Party is deeply rooted in the Prosperity Gospel, a televangelist movement that promotes the belief that material wealth is a sign of God's favor and that poverty results from insufficient faith. Prosperity Gospel has been associated with exacerbating poverty in Africa due to its use of deceptive tactics, fraudulent activities, and unfulfilled promises. Several African nations have taken steps to address this movement's negative impact. Local government authorities have suspended activities for a total of 714 churches in different parts of Kigali 
to speak about the fascination around prosperity gospel in South Africa. Um, we've been watching very carefully as we saw uh, Shepard Bushiri and his wife Mary being uh, locked up and they're now behind bars. They're looking to get... The integration of prosperity gospel and positive thinking ideologies into politics has injected complexity and challenges into addressing Ethiopia's real-world problems. Relying on faith and imagination instead of evidence-based approaches hinders the pursuit of practical solutions that acknowledge the intricate challenges faced by Ethiopia, the world's poorest nation. In the midst of enduring poverty experienced by Ethiopians, Abi Ahmed and his party appear to prioritize the creation of an illusion of success and wealth over addressing the root causes of poverty. Their investments are directed towards cosmetic solutions and visually striking projects such as parks, resorts, parking lots and attention-grabbing structures. This emphasis on superficial improvements rather than substantive measures to alleviate poverty and enhance the lives of the population has drawn criticism. The core tenets and fundamental ideologies of the Abiy administration encompass theocracy, ethnic oligarchy, and positive thinking cult. Under Abiy rule in the past five years alone, the loss of Ethiopian lives has surpassed the total casualties of the previous century combined. Over five million people forcibly displaced from their homes, perpetual and horrifying mass atrocities, a devastating civil war that has claimed one million lives and cost $30 billion. The unprecedented use of drones against citizens by Abi Ahmed, forceful ethnic demographic changes, ethnic cleansing, allegations of nepotism, a surge in kidnappings, targeted political assassinations, an inflation rate soaring to 34%, rampant and deeply entrenched corruption, a prevailing sense of lawlessness, the complete absence of a functioning rule of law, the torture of journalists and activists, the existence of mass detention centers, a shrinking middle class with civil servants, teachers, doctors and engineers facing deteriorating living standards, grave human rights violations and the widespread occurrence of arbitrary arrests. Abiy Ahmed's audacious attempt to tear apart the millennia-old Ethiopian Orthodox Church along ethnic lines is an utterly disgraceful maneuver, weakening an institution that transcends ethnicity and unites all Ethiopians, boasting a staggering 74 million followers, is an unforgivable betrayal. He carried out this despicable act for two reprehensible purposes. Firstly, by weakening and dividing the church along ethnic lines with limited outreach to entice orthodox followers towards the corrosive appeal of prosperity gospel. Secondly, he embarked on this misadventure to secure support from his Oromo nationalist base, who view the Ethiopian Orthodox Church primarily as an enemy due to its unifying role that transcends ethnicity. Abiy Ahmed established the Ethiopian Council of Gospel Believers and introduced prosperity gospel followers into the organization, a move that was previously not accepted. This decision has triggered resentment among other evangelical Christians who consider the prosperity gospel as deceitful. Abiy Ahmed has effectively leveraged his authority to position prosperity gospel adherents in key roles within the council. The prosperity gospel is a feeble imitation of true Christianity.
It utterly neglects crucial aspects of the gospel, such as embracing brokenness, enduring suffering, practicing humility, and being prepared for delays and persecution. Delusional Abbey continues to act like a pastor, running Ethiopia as his personal pulpit, with Ethiopians unwillingly cast as his churchgoers, despite the fact that a whopping 95% of Ethiopians reject this ridiculous charade. Abi Ahmed takes a personal interest in and oversees these superficial projects, treating them as his own pet initiatives. Many of these endeavors are funded through foreign aid and loans. He takes pride in showcasing these projects to esteemed guests, presenting them as personal achievements. AB's focus seems to be on high-profile initiatives, often at the expense of crucial infrastructure like schools, hospitals and roads. Critics argue that he appears disconnected from the daily struggles of the most vulnerable individuals in his country, living in a separate reality. This has resulted in the neglect of important priorities like reconstructing the war-torn economy and resettling the five million displaced Ethiopians. Additionally, Abi has put forth plans for the construction of a $15 billion palace, even as the country is in dire need of resources to reconstruct hospitals and schools in the aftermath of the civil war. The ongoing construction of Abi Ahmed's imperial palace on a sprawling 504-hectare plot in the Yekka Hills of Addis Ababa is undeniably extravagant. In terms of sheer size, it surpasses the collective areas of iconic landmarks such as Windsor in the UK, Versailles in France, the White House in the USA, the Kremlin in Russia, and the Forbidden City in China. The estimated cost of the palace project is astronomical, potentially exceeding $15 billion, which is nearly equivalent to Ethiopia's entire annual budget of $14.6 billion. This enormous allocation of funds for the palace's construction sharply contrasts with, with the grim reality of Ethiopia's basic infrastructure. The nation grapples with deteriorating roads, inadequate healthcare facilities, struggling schools, and a lack of essential services, all of which have been exacerbated by the devastating impact of a civil war. This stark disparity between the opulent palace project and the pressing needs of the population underscores the influence of what some may refer to as the prosperity gospel mentality a belief system that emphasizes personal prosperity and success while potentially disregarding the hardships of others. The stark contrast between the lavish palace project and the pressing needs of the population underscores the impact of a prosperity gospel mindset, often linked to the idea of divine order and spiritual guidance. This belief system places a heavy emphasis on personal prosperity and success sometimes at the expense of recognizing the harsh realities around you or the suffering of others, while focusing on surrounding oneself with opulent possessions and beauty. When parliamentarians inquired about the funding sources for these projects, he adamantly claimed that they were financed through his personal endeavors, thereby excluding them from parliamentary oversight regarding budgets. This effectively conveyed that he considered the matter none of their concern. However, it's important to note that as a leader, he should be held accountable for all actions and decisions made while in office. And the notion of personal effort in this context raises questions about transparency and accountability. This demeanor is reminiscent of the unchecked power wielded by 18th century monarchs lacking the checks and balances that are integral to modern governance. Moreover, there are proposals for building an entirely new city from scratch 
in his home region, Oromia, which would involve the displacement of non-Oromo ethnic groups. Oromia Regional Governments is also building a palace at cost of $4 billion in Addis Ababa. These decisions highlight the substantial impact of his adherence to the prosperity gospel on his decision-making and priorities. Finding practical solutions and engaging in rational discussions becomes increasingly challenging when decision-making is driven by faith rather than grounded in practical problem-solving. The urgent needs of Ethiopia call for a leader capable of providing tangible and realistic solutions to real-world problems. While faith and positivity have their place, the nation's challenges demand pragmatic and effective leadership that can navigate complexities and devise strategies to uplift the nation from its current state of poverty. It's important to note some key statistics about Ethiopia. More than 70% of Ethiopia's population is employed in the agricultural sector. The country has 8,395 physicians. The yearly budget is approximately $12.9 billion. Ethiopia has a per capita gross national income of $1,020. Access to clean water in Ethiopia for the year 2020 was only 12.58% highlighting the significant challenges in access to basic necessities. 25 million Ethiopians are food aid reliant. Up to 78% of the population earns an income of less than $2 per day. There are 13 million people facing acute food insecurity. Abiy Ahmed's theocratic prosperity gospel and ethnocratic one-ethnic Oromo supremacy government have failed miserably. Take a look back at the last five years, and the answer is crystal clear. He systematically tore the nation apart, block by block, leaving behind a trail of devastation. There's nothing terrible that didn't befall Ethiopia under his leadership. Why on earth would Ethiopians even consider granting another day to this mad king. It's beyond comprehension. It is our solemn duty to put an immediate end to this delusional theocratic nonsense. Ethiopia is in dire need of a pragmatic, honorable and grounded leader who can unify the nation, tackle pressing issues and diligently combat poverty. We must steer clear of leaders like Abi a delusional, self-proclaimed, divinely ordained seventh king, a leader who consistently spreads misinformation, sowing the seeds of doubt through a trail of unkept promises. This individual not only falls short in embodying the vital virtues of candor, empathy, and fundamental common sense, but also exhibits an alarming obliviousness, creating a vast disconnect from the struggles and challenges faced by the people. Such a leader not only erodes the very foundations of trust and effective governance, but in the end, becomes a destructive force that threatens the very existence of the nation. It's time to demand a leader who embodies the qualities and principles our nation deserves. Ethiopia deserves far better than this.